Okay, the first thing I want to do after I download the pka.pka file is to save it to my flash drive. And here I've done this already, and I'm going to name it based on the actual lab. So this is the 533-DHEP lab. Save it. Okay, first step, it says, I'm going to be doing DHEP on a network of the multi-function device, the Linksys. So step one, add three PCs to the work area. I'll select end devices down here, drop three PCs in. Add a Linksys WRT300, that's under wireless devices. And connect HPC to an Ethernet port on the Linksys device using a straight through cable. Here my connections, here my copper straight through cable. Plug it into the fast Ethernet port. Port one. Oops. Ethernet, port two, Ethernet, port three. Observe the default DHP settings. Click the Linksys router to open the configuration window. Okay, well, before I did this, I want to make sure that these are PC zero. Zero one. There we go. PC zero one two three. What I can do is check results as well and see what stuff I've done so far. And it's not checking anything except the HEP, but it is PC zero, PC one, PC two. So that's what I wanted to make sure that I had. All right, so we need to check out the default DHP settings, it says. Click the link this router to open the configuration window. Click config, display name, DHP enabled on the router. So we're going to take a look at that. Click on the config tab. to the basic setup page, review the settings, including the default IP address of Linksys device. <coughs> scroll through this. The default IP address for this router is 192.168.0.1. The DHCP server for this wireless Linksys device is enabled. And the start IP address is 192.168.0.100. Maximum number of users, 50, so it's going to stop at 149. There's the range. <coughs> Client least time, zero minutes. Zero means one day. So if we leave this at zero, it's going to be one day. <coughs> change the default IP address of the Linksys device. The router IP section, change the IP address of the Linksys device to 192.168.5.1. <coughs> right, so the router IP now reads 192.168.5.1. Scroll to the bottom and click save. And I'll go ahead and save. Change the DHCP range. Notice the starting IP address is 5.100. Change the starting IP address to 5.100 to 5.26. We're going to 
changes to 26. <coughs> Maximum number of users to 75. Click Save Settings. Okay, now let's save the settings. We can close this. And they want us to go to PC0 and config the fast Ethernet to DHCP. So we're going to go to PC0, config, fast Ethernet, change it to DHCP. <coughs> Notice the IP address automatically pops in there, 192.68.5.26. We're going to do the same thing for PC1. And we're going to take a look at command prompt. PC1. IP config. We see it does not have an IP address. So then they want us to enable the HP on PC1 into <coughs> using the config tab. Big, fast Ethernet, DHCP. Redo the command, and now we can see we have the next available IP address has been assigned to us. We're going to do the exact same thing on PC2. Yep, you can identify on your router how many. IP addresses that you're going to hand out through DHCP. So that doesn't mean that um, I couldn't go in and configure a static IP address on this computer. So let's take a look at that option. That's a good good question. Well, just like to kind of elaborate a little bit, let's say uh, I, I have a wireless network in my house. I, I don't want anybody to you know, be able to connect to it if they know anything about the computer and creating stuff. I can well, that's not true. The question was, if I have a wireless network and I want to restrict to just a certain number of computers for the individuals that I want to be able to allow connected, if I reduce my DHCP pool to only those five computers, then will I restrict other people that have access to it? No. And let me demonstrate why. What you want to do, though, to answer your question is to configure advanced wireless security, a WPA key that's very hard to guess. That's going to keep people out that aren't supposed to be in. The DHCP pool of addresses available is just the number of addresses that this server will hand out. It doesn't mean that I can't just statically configure an IP address to work. So if we take a look at this computer, it's been given IP address 182.68.5.28, correct? So watch this. If I go to the router and take a look, I'm handing out IP addresses all the way up to 182.68.5.75. So if I go to this workstation here, PC number 2, and I go to the IP configuration and change it to static, So I'm changing the IP address to something static outside of the range, the DHP range. Let's see if this will work. Type IP config, and now I'm using 5.77 instead of what I had before, 5.28. Can I still ping the router, 5.1? Yes, I can. Can I ping one of the other workstations? 182, 5.26 was the first workstation that got an IP address. And yes, I can. So even though DHCP is configured to only hand out X number of IP addresses, I can still statically configure my workstation to have an address that works within the network, right? IP config. Realizing that the first three octets identify the network, so that means any number in this last octet will work on this network as long as it's not a duplicate IP. Let's see if I can assign an IP address within the scope. 
So 75 was a number in the scope, right? Or 70? Let's use 70. That's a nice number here. Let's change this to 70 and see if it will work. And I'm using 70 now. Can I ping? Probably that one. Yes, I can. So I'm even using an IP address now within the pool of the scope of addresses that the server's handing out. So could that DHP server hand out a computer to use this IP address, even though I'm statically using it? Yes. Yes, you can. Yep, so that can have problems. Now, uh, the first address I was used was 26, correct? 192.68.5.26. Let's configure my computer with that IP address. See what happens. Ooh. The like workstation realized that, oh, there is already a computer on this network with 5.26, so I'm not going to allow myself to have 5.26, so I have to change it to something else. So going back to DHCP, and I got 5.28, which I had before. Making sure I can still ping, and I can't. So that's working. Let's go back to my lab and check my results so far. Congratulations, completing this activity. I can see when I click on assessment items, I've completed everything I needed to in this lab. So I earned all the points. And that's the lab. So now that I'm done, I want to select File, Save. And then this is the file now that I want to submit to Blackboard they save the final results. So when I open it, I can see that you have completed the packet tracer lab. Any questions?